Hey, what's up, Good Life? Thanks for joining me for today's 128 moment. Today's the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, and today I'm thankful. Let me give you a few reasons why. I'm thankful for grace, and I'm thankful for the gospel. I'm certainly thankful for my family. I'm thankful for good life, and I'm thankful for how God has provided and protected us during this crazy year. But as I'm preparing for Sunday's sermon, I'm also reminded to be thankful for something that I tend to forget. I'm thankful that my past sins don't determine my future in God's story. You know, as we walk through God's big story, we meet some of the most prominent figures in his story. When we see those people, we tend to only remember their triumphant moments from this highly filtered perspective. Sometimes we can take those figures in the Bible and we can put them up on pedestals in our minds. And somewhere along the way, we can become convinced that God only uses nearly perfect people. When in fact, The record of God's story is really the exact opposite. God not only uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things, as as we said last Sunday, He also calls people with glaring flaws to be a part of the story in order for Him to get the glory that He deserves. We met two such people last week, Noah and Abram, who had become Abraham. But when we put people like Noah and people like Abraham up on a pedestal, we assume that their near perfection is the reason that God decided to use them. But let me tell you, those two men were far from perfect. Noah, when he came off the ark, he planted a vineyard, he made some wine, and he got so drunk one night that he was laying there completely unclothed in front of his sons, and it wrecked his family. Then you got Abram. Abram, on more than one occasion, pretended to be his wife's brother so he could hide behind her for protection in very difficult situations. You know, if God only used perfect people, his story would be very short. But somehow, this all-powerful, all-knowing, unlimited God chooses to work in and through imperfect people like Noah and Abram and us. He not only works through us in spite of our worst moments, He even works right in our worst moments. When we are at our worst, sometimes God's grace is seen even more clearly. You know, David was a liar. He was an adulterer and a murderer, yet he's remembered as a man after God's own heart. Paul was a persecutor and likely a murderer of Christians before he met Christ on the road to Damascus and became a church planner. Peter, he denied Jesus three times before he became the leader of the church. Now, you don't have to be perfect for God to use you in His story. If we are in Christ, our past does not define us. Jesus does. And when we're in Christ, when we confess our sins, He forgives our sins and He cleanses us of all unrighteousness. And we are set free from the shame of our sinful past so that we can step into the role that God has called us to play. To be a people who live to know Jesus and to make Jesus known. To be a people who will love enough to share the good news and share our lives as well. So today, Good Life, I encourage you to be thankful that God not only uses imperfect people, that He gives us everything we need to be more like Christ every single day so we can make Christ known to the world. And that, that's a story worth living. Hopefully you'll be able to join us this Sunday as we continue our beginning to end series, walking through God's big story from the in the beginning of Genesis to the amen of Revelation, walking through that story not only to understand the author more clearly, but to understand our place in his story, because his story is still unfolding right here in our day and time. And that he uses imperfect people, ordinary people, people with checkered past to be living testimonies to His grace and His mercy, and we get to be a part of His plan, making His grace and His mercy and His love known to the world. What an awesome story we get to be a part of, and hopefully you can join us this Sunday at 9.30 and 11 at church, also online at 9.30 as we continue to walk through God's big story. Hopefully, we'll see you then.